Hello, folks, and welcome back to PCOM 300 Professional Communication with me, Dr. Matt Barton. And, <laughs> you know, if you watched my other lectures, you probably uh, expected that I would be uh, really enjoying this chapter because I'm, I, I just, I love the motivational stuff, folks. I, I like the motivational speakers on YouTube. I, I, I like to see them when they come to campus. Uh, it just really gets me jazzed up, excited. You know, not not just about careers, but you know, just just life. You know? <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like uh, you know when I, when I was growing up, we went to uh, uh, church every Sunday. Went through a variety of different preachers. And this was in the deep south. <laughs> so you can imagine uh, what some of these preachers were like. But I always really liked the ones, or I preferred the ones that were uplifting. You know, you you go hear one of their sermons, and it's just like you're jumping, <laughs> you're standing up, you're excited. <laughs> You know, they, they get everybody kind of pumped up and like, yeah, you can do this. You know, don't be shy. Don't be intimidated. Uh, let's, you know, we can do this. You know, and it was, it was a very sort of a positive uh, a message in those sermons. And I always like those better than the sort of what we might call it, like a hellfire and, and brimstone. You know, you're going to go to hell, you sinner. <laughs> I mean, there's probably a time and a place for that, too. But just, you know, me personally, I always preferred those uh, uh, motivating motivational preachers same thing now i still i love that you know you're feeling bad you're feeling uh daunted by something maybe just having a crappy day you know i just find turning into a uh, youtube and you know pulling up one of those motivational uh, uh motivational speakers does a lot for me so you might you might try that too next time you're down <laughs> down and out <laughs> and i just remember what was that you know dr barton said yeah let me go to youtube type in motivating uh, motivational or something like that and uh, maybe this will do the trick, right? Uh, but anyway, we're talking about careers today. Um, challenges, that, you know, it could be an academic challenge, uh, it could be a personal challenge, or it could be a career challenge, but just something about your career path, you know, looking down the road at something, uh, thinking about uh, what is it about this career choice or uh, this question you might have that's uh, intimidating? You know, what is it about the challenge that makes it so daunting? Uh, so just a few examples from students over the years. You know, I've talked to uh, uh, students, for example, that don't like the idea of any kind of public speak. You know, that's that's a pretty common fear. I remember I've I've talked to people who were just really smart, brilliant minds, hardworking, just great people all around. Uh, but, you know, but maybe when they hear that, okay, well, in this job you will have to get up in front of a jury sometimes, or in front of a judge and like argue a case or argue your evidence, you know, if you're a forensics type person, and there'll be somebody there trying to poke holes, you know, in what you're saying, try to uh, catch you in an error or embarrass you even, try to trip you up uh, in some fashion. Uh, and that might be really intimidating. And a lot of times uh, stuff seems really scary in your mind, more so, you know, once you actually do it, you find out, well, that wasn't <laughs> such a big deal. <laughs> You know, and other things, you know, I've talked to a lot of uh, nursing students and they might get nervous about, well, I mean, there's some stuff uh, that nurses do that's not commonplace <laughs> for you or me to be doing. <laughs> uh, you know, like giving shots, right, or you know, dealing with people in pain and or giving somebody a bath, you know, shaving, <laughs> body parts. <laughs> I've, I've heard it all. Uh, I've known plenty of nurses personally, and they tell me these, uh, these, these stories. But uh, again, it's just you can build up something in your mind. And, but if you let it fester there, right, if you don't deal with it, if you don't prepare yourself mentally to deal with that challenge, it can just overwhelm you and you end up uh, not being successful in your career. And that's really sad. So, uh, again, it's one of the things we want to do in this course and in this class and in the program, or at least a university, one of the goals of a university is to help you to uh, meet those challenges, right? You know, get in that mental place where you can overcome it. But anyway, right now, thinking about your personal, your career challenge, what is it about it, if anything? You could probably think of something if you really work at it. <laughs> What's something that currently intimidates you about it? And what is it about the challenge that makes it seem so daunting? Ah, uh, yes, challenges. Uh, I'm not sure if I should share this story. I'm pretty sure my brother... <laughs> <laughs> it's a story about my brother i'm pretty sure he doesn't ever watch these lectures you know i'm, I'm willing to, to bet he probably has other things to do <laughs> he's got a small small kid at the moment so he's probably uh, dealing with my uh, nephew actually but uh, but anyway uh, 
the story, I'll never forget this. And I, I chose this because uh, you might recognize these photos here. These are pictures from Quarry Park. Um, I guess it's, it's in St. Cloud or a little bit outside the city limits. I don't know. Wait Park, whatever. It's Quarry Park. It's like a mile away. <laughs> and uh, usually in the summertime, the kids... And sometimes you see grown-ups out there, but they'll, they'll sort of climb up a thing here on the side, and they come out on this sort of cliff edge. And it looks, it's actually higher than it looks. <laughs> and when you get up on top of that edge and look down, it looks like it's really far below. Um, but, you know, you see these kids, they'll jump off, and then, you know, kind of like here, and they have a good time falling. It's, you know, kind of like a little diving board, I suppose, sort of a experience, cannonball, you know, you name it. Uh, but anyway, uh my brother came to town, and he loves swimming, and he kept on, and I told him, well, there's this place called Quarry Park, and, you know, all this stuff, and they got the, the water swimming hole, whatever. Oh, I gotta go. I want to go. He he was just raring to go. So we <laughs> suited up. I <laughs> uh, got down here to uh, Quarry Park, and, I, you know, of course, he wanted to jump off the, the rock. And so we climbed up there. You see the kid there with the inner tube uh, climbing up there. So, uh you know, you waited in line, and it was my turn. I ran off, jumped off. Uh, now, I'm not going to say I wasn't a little bit scared uh, about this, but I my, my attitude was kind of like, it's, <laughs> yeah, sure, it's a little bit scary, but, man, there's, like, little kids doing this. Uh, and I really didn't want, uh, you know, to embarrass myself in front of them. And I also, um, you know, didn't want to embarrass myself in front of my brother. <laughs> you know, I'm the big brother, you know, I'm supposed to be brave. Uh, and do these things. So I just kind of psych myself by saying, I'm just going to just get a running start, jump, not even think about, I'm not going to let myself think about what I'm doing. <laughs> just going to completely, uh, I'm going to focus on some trees or something uh, off in the distance, not even really pay attention to, uh, you know, the actual thing I'm doing. So I just was able to run up there, jump off, and it was fun. Uh, okay, uh, so that was my brother's turn. You know, there's all these kids, are, this is what makes it so bad. There's all these kids like waiting for their turn. Uh, so my poor brother, uh, you know, he's, he, he sees me do it. <laughs> and so he starts to get kind of a run, but you can tell, like, he's he's not, you know, he looks like he's really scared. Right? He just looks very nervous about this, uh, very hesitant. Uh, so he, he stops running, and then he walks out to the edge, and he, look, he looks over and, and looks down, and then he, he, he sort of, you got this, this look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> like he just, like he just he's too intimate. He psyched himself out. So then he starts to like slowly like walk backwards off the edge. And all the kids back there, you know, they oh come on, you know, you can do this. What what do you have? People are by this point, people in the water are looking up at him and like you know everybody's teasing him and it's, it's kind of merciless. And, I, and I'm down there I'm like Luke, you know, <laughs> just get a good run, you know, and just you know fly off. Don't you know? Don't think about it too much. But you know, he ended up. Uh, having to come back down, you know, sort of do that well, walk of shame, and <laughs> you know, it was. Uh, I'm sure that was like really traumatizing for him. Um, so I, I tried to walk through this sort of mental story I just told you. Uh, so finally, you know, I was able to psych himself up. I think what worked for him was I just kept saying, "Look, there's all these like small kids <laughs> doing this." <laughs> You know, if they can do it, you know, they're doing it fine. You saw me do it. Uh, just don't think about it. You know, sometimes it's helpful to count. You know, one, two, three, four, five, just start counting something like that. Uh, but whatever you can do to get yourself out of that moment of fear, <laughs> and then you'll finally be able to do it. Uh, so, you know, he took some embarrassment over that, but of course, ultimately was successful. All right. <laughs> So how to get from that story to <laughs> uh, back to careers? Uh, I don't know. Um, let's talk about why you might want to uh, embrace these opportunities. Why you might want to get into that position where you can do this thing that scares you, right? Or uh, do these things that you didn't think you could do. And, and really, what it comes down to again, when you're starting out, is your resume. You know, do you have items you can put on your resume that show that you're not just the average student or that you didn't just do the minimal standards, but you actually rose above, you know, you got something about you that's extraordinary. You're an exceptional person. You know, that's what you want to be able to prove. 
Now, you don't want to be in a position where you're just saying, look, I'm an exceptional person. I'm, I'm really brave. <laughs> you know, at some point, the proof is in the pudding, right? Uh, you know, my brother couldn't say to me, uh, I'm really brave, Matt. Uh, I said, like, hmm, really? Because you remember that time at Quarry Park, you know? <laughs> That's always going to be dredging. I'm going to always be... No, I wouldn't do that to him. <laughs> but, you know, it's always kind of there. Um, whereas if he had just, you know, jumped off the stupid thing, um, you know, that would be proof. Well, okay, I guess you are kind of uh, brave, right? Or you're kind of uh, maybe reckless. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it's the same thing, believe it or not, with like a resume. And so you're trying to find, like, what's the equivalent uh, of that jumping off that, you know, cliff into the water? Uh, you know, what, how can you sort of put yourself out there, put yourself on the spot, test yourself in some way uh, that will provide evidence that, yes, I can rise to a challenge. I, you know, I can get this thing done, what, whatever the case may be. Even though I'm scared, even though it's intimidating, uh, I can do it. Uh, and now with a resume, uh, this is what's called um, showing, not telling. It's really the same thing for creative writing, too. But anyway, uh, the idea here is you try to think of things that show uh, that you are a cut above, right? And so here we have this pretty easy one to put GPA. So you notice this one doesn't have a GPA. Uh, but this one they put 4.0 GPA. But really the, the cool thing, I think, is this line about published a poem, published poem in Upper Mississippi Harvest Magazine. Now, you see, this item, to me, is showing they got, they got a little bit of bravery, right? They, they, they could have just had the attitude of, well, I don't know if anybody's going to like my poem. They might laugh at the poem. Uh, they might think it's a bad poem. I might not win. You know, I'm just going to not show anybody this, <laughs> much less, you know, submit it to, the, to this uh, magazine. And so, to me, it, it kind of takes a certain amount of moxie just to submit something like a poem or a story, uh, to a magazine like this, and this, by the way, is the uh, SESU's creative magazine. Students can submit uh, you know, short stories, poems, I think essays, pretty much anything, uh, I believe, uh, to this. And some of them are, are selected for publication. Some win prizes. You know, it's a pretty prestigious thing. But it takes uh, some guts to, uh, you know, work yourself up to submitting something to it. Right? A lot of people don't. And it's the same for the awards we'll talk about in a minute. And so that, you know, this is the sort of thing here that to me really looks good. Even if the job itself, maybe you're not going to be writing poetry, okay, <laughs> or whatever this job is. But at least this shows, you know, you're not scared. You got some pride in your work. You got some, uh, you know, some uh, belief in yourself. And you're able to uh, submit something like this and actually in this case win it. But even if it just said, uh, entered a poem or submitted a poem, uh, even that would be to me saying something. Uh, and then down here we have uh, a server position at Perkins. Okay. Uh, but this first one, they just say server. So it's like, I had to do this. It's just saying what you did. Uh, whereas the second example, there's a line that says, Awarded Perkins Restaurant and Baker Hospitality Award. So I guess this, uh, what I like about this, uh, again, it shows you, uh, you've done something. <laughs> <laughs> now this could be the thing that comes up in the interview, right? What you know? What did you do to win that award? And then you could tell the story. Maybe it was a busy day and you just were really quick on your feet, or maybe you stayed afterward, or you know who knows. <laughs> you know, super nice, got a lot of compliments, good customer feedback. But you know, clearly something in some way you must have gone above and beyond uh, to secure that award. All right, so let's open this up and look at some of these opportunities here. And you can see they are usually do um, uh, separated by majors. So you'd want it one with communication in the title. And I'm not certain about where professional communication fits into some of these. You'd have to ask. But my understanding is as a PCOM, you're sort of in, you got a foot in all camps, right? Mass Com, Com Studies, and English. Uh, so I'm pretty sure you could apply for any of these. You know, that major would cover the gamut. Uh, but again, you'd want to check with them to make sure. Uh, but what you, if you open these up and look at them, uh, a lot of these will have these supplemental questions or basically an essays that they want you to write or a writing sample, you know, something along those lines. Uh, 
in a mass comm, it might be a little video clip. You know, who knows? Uh, but you notice here they say, in 500 words or less, explain why you're majoring in, or minoring in English, what you plan to do with your degree after graduation, and how you plan to use the scholarship to help fund your education. So I've actually been on the committee for these, several of these, and uh, usually what happens, believe it or not, uh, nobody applies. <laughs> so you, even the ones with like money. Uh, so there's just no application. So they just put the money away and uh, save it for next time. Uh, so it's a really, it's a shame. And I try to promote these things as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, you should be on top of that. You know, go to this page, stcloudstate.academicworks.com. And I just say anything that looks, you know, if you're in doubt, you could always email. Right? And say, look, what is, uh, you know, it's like one of the communication studies ones. So I would like some more information about, you know, I'd like some more information about this award or this scholarship. You know, can you send me uh, a link? You know, or a, uh, maybe they've got a, a PDF file or something. It never hurts to ask, but, you know, I think, you know, if you if you apply for, try to make a point of applying for at least a few every year, chances are pretty good you'll get at least one. You know, so I think that's really great stuff and not too hard to do. You know, and that's the, I think that one I was just showing you about the 500 word essay. I mean, that's something you should be thinking about anyway. <laughs> and so hopefully it wouldn't be that hard to put that together. And I did these, a lot of these times, uh, you know, when I was a student undergrad, uh, I'd be uh, walking down the hall and they would have these, you know, like a St. Cloud State. You know, I know we're not walking around the halls at the moment. I'm recording this. It's uh, kind of lockdown, I suppose. But they, they got these poster boards. And if you look over there at those posters, sometimes they'll have a, a contest. They'll say, or, or an award, and they'll say, apply, you know, for this or that. Uh, maybe it's a, a magazine prize or something. Uh, but I remember when I was doing it, I was an English major. Uh, but I was walking around a uh, the biology department, sorry, <laughs> the biology department, <laughs> and I saw a flyer for a contest for a... Um, a, a writing essay or an essay contest and the essay was about the role of the family doctor I think they called it the general practitioner in society you know, something like that uh, and I just thought you know I know absolutely zero <laughs> about this <laughs> but uh, I'm just you know I'm just going to see what I can do so I just went home wrote up this essay I, I thought about well you know I, th I thought about my doctor you know, when I was a kid, and uh, the sort of, we sort of had this family doctor, I suppose, and I talked a little bit about him and sort of what it meant to me and how that um, person was kind of this key person in society because uh, a lot of people trusted the doctor. <laughs> it's been many years since I wrote the essay, but I pretty much just came up with stuff uh, just off the top of my head, and I just thought I had no snowball's chance in you-know-where <laughs> to win. <laughs> Uh, but again, I don't know if just so few people uh, submitted an essay at all to this thing or why, but I ended up winning like third prize. You know, even though I, I was not a biology person, you know, I just uh, submitted this and lo and behold, now I've got this pretty prestigious uh, prize. And I could say, <laughs> you know, yes, I'm published in this biology uh, journal or whatever uh, the case may be. So that, you know, that was, uh, I, I tell that, I'm not trying to brag or boast. I mean, my point is just if you keep your eye open and you see these sort of contest prizes, w opportunities, whatever the case may be, don't just think, well, I can't do that or that doesn't pertain to me or I, I would never win. Uh, just just kind of do what I did and just say, you know, what the heck? You know, what have I got to lose? Uh, you know, I, I, can't, I can't take a few hours and, or maybe even a day to, you know, write up an essay or something, uh, submit it and just see what happens. You know, because if... Uh, you could be lucky like like I got. <laughs> and then you got something really cool you could put on your resume. Now, okay, volunteerism, same deal here. Um, you don't want to be waiting until you're on the job search and then you find out, oh my God, I've done nothing to distinguish myself. Um, sometimes it's hard to get you know the best GPA, but even if you have a great GPA and everything else looks good, having a little bit of a service component, a little bit of volunteerism, looks really good and plus these will give you some opportunities you might not have so you go to the department of campus involvement at stcloudstate.edu campus involvement slash volunteer service 
with a hyphen in it, or you could just search for this, and you'll see all of these opportunities to take action. And some of them are academic based, like you can see here, these are about stuff you learned in class, but they also have just general uh, volunteer work. I think there's uh, yeah, scholarships down here, so pretty much everything is, is here on this page. Uh, so you can see on campus, off campus, campus network, let's see about on campus, <clears throat> cultural nights in Atwood Memorial Center. So you help international students plan a cultural night that showcases their home nation. Work typically includes decorating, serving food, and helping with setup and tear down. Check out the Atwood Center events calendar and contact the student organization for more. Yeah, this one would be, I think, particularly good because you start learning uh, some stuff about other cultures, which that's always a big plus, but you never know who might, what kind of guest speakers might be there, and you get a chance to interact with them, and not to mention uh, uh, the other students uh, doing this work, and you know, just think about how good that would look on a resume. It would really show you uh, care about diversity, and that's huge, uh, by the way. And so instead of just saying, well, yes, I support diversity, you know, anybody can say it. Uh, but if you've got something on your resume that says, I, I did the cultural nights, okay, I, I volunteered for this, I decorated, served food, and helped with the <laughs> You can just copy and paste. <laughs> you know, I did that work, and that's going to look, that's going to pop. It's going it's to look on the, it's something that says you, it's not just telling, it's showing. And so that sort of thing is really good for making that resume uh, shut. Okay, so this chapter... It's not really about the stuff I've been talking about, but I just kind of spun off my own <laughs> uh, my own stuff. Uh, this is a good one, and I, you know, a lot of this book I'm learning this stuff too, and I'm not going to sit here and claim like I'm a, you know, the the the, the master of speaker or anything like that. I, I'm actually intimidated a lot of times by public speaking or like you know speaking up in a committee meeting. You know, a lot of times I'm on a lot of committees as a professor, and some of these would be. You know, there's like 30 people, 30, 30 other professors on the committee. Deans might be on there. Sometimes it's even like the president of the university. You know, talk, you know that's intimidating. <laughs> and you're thinking, uh, should I just not say anything? Should I try to jump into the conversation? And I remember this even as a student. Uh, anytime there was a group, like a seminar class, and uh, the grade, sometimes they would, the teacher would come in, the professor would say, the part of your grade is uh, speaking up so you you know you want to uh if you don't speak up in class ever if you're like totally quiet you'll get a bad grade for participation in the class and that was i always hated that <laughs> and i really i just could not stand it because i i really had a hard time like just trying to get a word in and it always seemed like the you know you you know, it's by the second or third class it'd be like the same two or three people and like 90 percent of the conversation would just be uh, bouncing between those three and even if you finally had a point to make you know good luck you know getting noticed getting the uh, attention uh, by that point the you know pattern was late and uh, so I was able to finally figure out how to be a little bit more successful and it was really you know even though I hadn't read Piers at the time I wish I had because she's basically saying what definitely worked and I can testify it works work for me <laughs> and if, if somebody is introverted and shy as, 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 as me if, if I can do it you certainly can do it too uh, so look at the advice in general try to add a comment here or there ask a question or when all or when uh, all else fails affirm something someone has already said that that's a great point mark you can't jump in if you are invisible uh, so this is, I think, the key, you know, especially when you're, if you can, if the first time you're at a meeting, the first time you're at the class and the seminar, whatever the case may be, you know, if you can just make a point of just, no matter how painful it is, just saying something right away. You know, so a lot of times at the very beginning of a class, there won't be those patterns laid in yet. Or the same thing at a meeting. And I'll say something like, does anybody have any questions or comments? You know, and that's your spot. You know, if you just have something prepared in advance, and she doesn't, uh, you know, talk about this here, but what I like to do, you know, especially if it's that situation uh, when you have some time to prepare ahead of, ahead of time or before the Q&A, I'll just write, literally write down the question uh, that occurs to me because you'll forget when you're on the spot. <laughs> but if you have it written down, uh, then when that little session comes up, you can raise your hand and, you know, you're good to go. Uh, so that's really helpful. 
I also find just even making a point of like saying good morning, you know, how are you? Uh, you know, I'm Matt Barton. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even something like that, just to kind of break that ice, kind of get used to working your mouth a little bit, you know, and kind of uh, warm up a little bit that way, uh, that can help as well. And what you don't want to do, and she's absolutely right, if you just uh, get in that comfort, if you just stay in your comfort zone, you don't say anything, you don't ask any questions, you just totally quiet, you know, doing that, uh, <laughs> uh, doing that, uh, don't look at me routine, you know. What, what's going to happen? They're, the boss, the manager, whoever it is, is going to think, well, that person, uh, you just don't really care about the class or the job. You know, you're, you're not really engaged in this committee, uh, this organization. You're just kind of here. Uh, you're just a butt in a seat, as they say. You're not really participating. So great advice here, I think. You know, usually you can find uh, something to ask a question about. You know, that usually works for me. And uh, it can be a little painful at first, but... Uh, once you break that ice, it gets increasingly easier. Uh, then they talk about how your employer may test you uh, by presenting you with some kind of unique challenge. And a lot of times, uh, you know, what always comes to my mind is the martial arts. I'm just kind of captivated by this picture. <laughs> so, you know, I, I encourage everybody. I think everybody should learn some, some rudiments of self-defense. And we have some classes here at St. Cloud State that are... Now, either free or relatively cheap, you know, you can take these classes, but uh, the the uh, sensei, or this class, I took a class called Tung Sudo here. I was a professor, but I took a class. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, but the Kyoso, what he called himself, a sensei, uh, instructor, uh, there was a test that they would give, uh, once you had been in the class for long enough, you would go up for like, a belt test, I think they called it, and it's been a few years, and Part of that was breaking a board. And so just like this picture here, you know, they'd be holding up a board, and sometimes you would be the one holding the board, uh, and then they would, uh, you know, as part of the belt test, they'd come in and kick it and punch it or whatever, and, you know, break the board. Uh, and sometimes the kiosk would just kind of mess with you a little bit, might just say, well, I know you, you folks aren't ready yet. You know, it's the, you know, this, this is a, you're just watching somebody else's uh, belt test, right? But sometimes he would just say, how about you? You know, would you like to come try this board? <laughs> would you like to try breaking a board now? And, you know, of course, everybody would be, gonna be really, oh, no, no, not me, you know. Uh, but really, he was doing exactly what these employers do. You know, just kind of getting a feel for, like, who in this class is really motivated? Who's somebody who's going to emerge as a leader? Right? Who, who is somebody who's really, uh, you know, not afraid? Uh, to take the challenge, or afraid, but able to overcome it. And really, you know, you know, she's, she's right about this. They probably, unless it's just, you know, I have a hard time imagining an employer trying to set somebody up for failure. I mean, I wouldn't want to work for such a person anyway. You know, usually it's they think you're ready, and they're just saying, you know, if you, uh, you know, are you going to be too intimidated, or are you just going to step up to the plate and say, you know, if you think I can do it, I'll give it, a, I'll give it the, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll try my best to do it. You know, in the case of these boards, you know, it's just a great metaphor for life. I think that's another reason to take one of these martial arts classes, because you can do stuff you just, you just totally didn't think you could do. Um, there's a show called uh, Cobra Kai uh, that I've been watching lately, so maybe that's why I'm thinking so much about these karate classes, but... You know, one of the things about these, uh, breaking these boards, you know, when, you, when you're standing there and the Kyoso's like, look, here's, I'm holding this board. Come punch this board. <laughs> like, oh, oh, yeah, right. You know, I'm not going to come over there. I'm just going to hurt my hand doing that. You, you know, you're crazy. You know, so it's really just seems like the impossible thing to do. Uh, but then uh, you might have, you know, this is literally what happened to me. Uh, a very, it wasn't a little girl like this, but it's very small, let's say, a uh, very small person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably weighed uh, half as much as I do. Uh, you know, stood up, said, I'll do it. You know, Kyoso, sure. And there wasn't a moment's doubt. She just went up there and, pow, just went right through the board. <laughs> Everybody was just like, wow. <laughs> you know, there's this, uh, and there were people bigger than, in my defense, there are people bigger than me in the class. You know, some of these big, uh, you know, folks that are much more athletic. And you know they didn't they didn't uh, jump up and volunteer. No, it was this, this sort of uh, you know small person who got up and basically showed us all, uh, 
you know, look, we uh, were, <laughs> she was the brave. She was brave. <laughs> you know, we were just being, uh, you know, too intimidated, too cowardly, basically, uh, to get up and do that. But once I had seen it, then I'm like, okay, <laughs> yes, I will do it now. And I'm just like, oh, hell no. Uh, I don't care how hard I have to punch this thing. I'm going to break that board. And, you know, it was, turned out to be not, uh, not a problem. It's not really a thing about strength. Uh, so much as it is just having that, uh, I guess, uh, belief that you can, you know, put your hand right through the board. Uh, but, you know, if you think about it too much, you let yourself uh, get too intimidated, that then you'll never do it. Uh, all right, but when might you not want to take on one of these challenges? And this is something she talks about a little bit here. I thought I would flesh it out for you. Uh, so, again, what can happen sometimes? You're the new person there. Uh, so they might start trying to figure out, well, how much work can we uh, burden this person with? You know, we're, we're going <clears> to, <throat> or there, there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to get done, a whole lot of opportunities, and you're just signing up for too much stuff. And you might be the uh, overachiever type, but you can just get in so far over your head, you got no time to do anything. And so we want to try to figure out what would be some good stuff to volunteer for, some, some good opportunities, and when should you sort of hesitate and say, hmm, you know, maybe not, not right now. So I put together some some questions you might ask. Uh, one is just, is it really voluntary? You know, at least for those that seek advancement. You know, so it might sometimes an employer might come in and they ask you to do something or ask, you know, would you be okay doing this or doing that? And really, it's something you need to do, uh, at least in their eyes, if you want to again rise to that, you know, next level. Uh, so even though it's phrased as like a question that you can just volunteer for it. You know, it could be a case where if you say no, it's going to have uh, ramifications on down the line. Uh, so, for example, if it was, uh, you know, would you be okay do, uh, you know, doing assessment for your classes, right? So <laughs> are you okay, like, trying to figure out if what you're doing in, your, in the classroom is actually working? And I just said, no, I don't have time for that. Oh, <laughs> would not be, uh, would not look too good uh, for me. Or if it was a case where, Everybody kind of felt like I was not uh, doing my share of the work. And, I, you know, they kind of phrase it as well. You know, how, how would you like to do this? You know, kind of as a way to uh, make up for this. <clears throat> and again, if I said no, too busy, you know, that might just confirm uh, their idea that I'm not pulling my own weight. So anyway, if it's not voluntary, of course you should do it. Uh, two, what are the, so, but what if it is? Okay, so the next question would be, what are the immediate and long-term rewards? So the immediate reward is, you look good, you say, yes, I'll volunteer, I'll do, I'll be on that committee, I'll be part of that project, whatever. Uh, so you look good right away, uh, but you also want to be thinking on down the road. So you've only got, there's only so many hours in, in a day, right? So would you rather be part of this project or that project? Uh, and sometimes it's a matter of, what am I going to get out of it, basically, long term? So will I learn some useful skills doing it? Will I get to uh, work with some influential people or some smart people? Uh, you know, that's kind of a long-term reward. It might be the start of a professional uh, relationship uh, that could go a long ways. Uh, so th those are the kinds of, it might not be money, it might not be a prize or something, uh, but there could be some really good long-term rewards. But again, you just have to think about it. Uh, three, what else will have to suffer? as you dedicate time and energy to the new project, right? So if I just, uh, for example, I'm on this university curriculum committee, volunteered for that, <laughs> and it takes a lot of time. You know, you have to look at a lot of stuff. There's a lot of meetings, you know, weekly meetings. Uh, there's a lot of energy you know, that goes into it, uh, mental and otherwise. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and of course, part of the trade-off is, well, now I have less time, let's say, to uh, you know, tend to all my other professorial uh, opportunities. Maybe I have less time to uh, do research or uh, uh, you know, write prizes <laughs> or submit to these uh, prizes and you know, things for uh, these other sort of honors I could be working on. Um, four, does the project offer compelling challenges or further opportunities? Right. So kind of like this, you know, the Kyoso saying, hey, would you like to uh, step up and break a board? You know, that could be, you know, if you do that uh, and you're successful, you know, the Kyoso might think, well, hmm, you know, this person, maybe, let's see what else we can do. Let's see, this person seems ready for the next uh, challenge. Maybe we'll bump up the uh, belt test. Uh, you know, who knows? You know, I'll, I like this too, the being your own hype woman. Uh, this is, again, another one I struggle with. 
you know, along with the, the, the speaking up, you know, I have a hard time with that. I tend to be introverted. Uh, but I really have a hard time with this one, and you might as well. Just We call it tooting your own horn. I say, nobody likes to brag. <laughs> look, look how wonderful I am. <laughs> you know, kind of resist that. But we should got we got to get over it because it's essential. And it's exactly right what she says here. You know, it's easy to wait to be given what's owed you. So you're, you're always kind of hoping, you know, that the supervisor, in my case the dean, will notice what I'm doing psychically, whatever. You know, they're, they're just going to see how hard I'm working and all of the ways I'm excellent and I'll be rewarded for it. And I won't be passed over for promotion because they'll just know how good of a job I'm doing. Uh, but she's right here. She's absolutely right. You can't expect that. You can't expect others to be aware of what you've done for them or the company. Even good managers don't know everything. You know, it's not like you're the only employee. <laughs> and you might feel like they uh, should uh, know what's going on, but this is the real world we're, we're talking about here, not our ideal situation. Uh, so what I advise is just to keep a personal list. We talked about that uh uh, Trello board, you know, it's a good place to put this. Or sometimes you just have a Google document. Uh, Google Docs, open that up. You know, something you can get to. If you have a phone, there's a Notes app on your phone you can use. And just every time you do something that you feel like shows off an achievement or you get a nice compliment, you know, about some work you've done. Uh, or uh, you know, if you do volunteer for something, write it down. Right? Keep that list. Put a date on it, a little bit of detail. Because uh, you're going to forget at least some of those items. You know, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and if you, uh, you know, if, if even you can't remember it, then what chance is there that the boss will remember that you did that thing? Uh, so I just say write it all down, no matter how trivial, menial it is, just put it on the list. Because uh, later on, when you need to think about ways you've achieved, you don't necessarily have to give them the whole list, okay? You, you don't do that. <laughs> you pick, like, the items that are the best, you know, that really help you in that situation. Uh, so I think she's absolutely right there. You've got to learn how to be your own advocate. You know, a lot of times people try to pass you over. They'll keep underestimating you time and time again. So you really have to be able to make a really good case. I can do this. All right, so let's wrap up then. Coming back to the question I asked to begin with. So think about that challenge or that thing that intimidated you. Uh, so in light of this chapter and what we talked about here, what can you do to prepare and motivate yourself to successfully rise to that challenge? So we will stop it here. Hope you enjoyed that and see you next time.